It's one of the biggest questions of our time. What exactly is the mobile gaming space now? And where do major gaming companies really fit within it? Well, I hope you aren't looking for a definitive answer on that, as it really doesn't exist, but there are lots of good reasons to come to a few different conclusions on it. Mobile gaming is something that has been with us for a long time and will likely not be going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, in some ways, mobile gaming is bigger than ever with many fantastically popular games bubbling to the surface all the time, many of which outsell and outperform much of what we see on other legacy platforms. So, given this, it would make sense that many forebearers of the gaming world would try to maintain a presence in that market and not leave all that money on the table. This has resulted in a wide variety of mixed results though. Atari, Sega, Nintendo, Sony, and others have all tried their hand in this space, many on multiple occasions, and most of these attempts have either failed or just narrowly avoided failure. While Nintendo is without a doubt the undisputed victor in this area, it has not gone without formidable challengers over the years. The Sega Game Gear and the PSP have both closed in on Nintendo's lead in mobile gaming many times, sometimes even squeaking past them for short-lived moments. But alas, even those systems have ultimately fallen in the wake of Nintendo's dominance. The PSP's challenge to Nintendo's DS is perhaps the closest anyone has gotten to truly dethroning Nintendo, but even that ended fairly quickly. As Nintendo's 3DS came along and Sony's Vita got held back by proprietary memory cards and a high cost of entry, it started to look more and more like Sony's future would not be including the mobile gaming market at all, despite the clear evidence that Sony's Vita failed to succeed in almost every measurable way, I personally can't help but wonder if Sony gave up their spot in the mobile gaming space with a little too much haste. Sure, the Vita failed, but the reasons why it failed were fairly clear and therefore avoidable in the future. So is it perhaps really that crazy to think that the mobile gaming market might actually have room for another Sony handheld? It's easy to see why Sony is being very conservative about taking risks as of late. The Vita was a commercial failure, the move was even more so, and PlayStation VR seems to have reached a plateau at best, despite getting rave reviews and plenty of great games to support it. Without a doubt, the most successful thing Sony has done in the gaming space has been their decision to focus on high-end gaming consoles that run great versions of third-party games and even better versions of first-party games. It would follow logically that Sony would just continue to focus on that and not deviate from the script going forward. But while sticking to the script can feel safe and stable, it can also lead to stagnation and missing out on new trends. This is not something Sony has ever really been comfortable with risking for too long, no matter how well their current flagship console might be doing. That said, the mobile gaming space is obviously very different now than it was in 2012. Gamers have found where they can get what they want from the mobile space and are fairly solidified in those choices. If they want Angry Birds and Candy Crush type games, they have their phones. If they want Pokemon, they have Nintendo. And now, with the Switch having some pretty good versions of modern AAA games from Mortal Kombat to Wolfenstein, the niche of high-end mobile gaming that Sony was always trying to fill seems to be fairly well taken care of. If Sony were to compete with the Switch in the mobile gaming space now, they would need to either beat them in that regard or totally subvert that race and go in another direction. Given that Sony's focus has chiefly been on the high-end marquee experiences, it would probably need to be the former of the two, and that would lead them to many of the same challenges they had before, with high cost barriers and a painfully slow trickle of exclusive games. As I see it, the only way for Sony to really exist in the mobile gaming space today is to directly acknowledge the challenge that Nintendo poses and take them on. They can't just ignore Nintendo and do their own thing and hope to take a meaningful chunk of the market share away from them. This poses its own unique hurdles though. The Switch is not primarily either handheld or home console, and because of the types of games people expect from Nintendo, they are able to get away with blurring the line between the two in terms of their system power. Sony just plain doesn't have that luxury. Or 
maybe it just doesn't seem like they do. When you think of PlayStation, you think of some of the best looking first party games out there, some of the best production values and technical achievements. This has long been a double edged blade for Sony as it gives them a sense of maturity and elegance that their competitors lack, but it also confines them to ultra powerful machines that cost a lot to make and buy. This is perhaps the biggest hurdle, yet the most important for Sony to overcome if they were to re-enter the mobile space. They need to break away from this notion. While it's true that God of War and Horizon are the flagship franchises of PlayStation currently, Sony still has a wealth of IP that would go well on handhelds, with shorter development cycles and smaller budgets, but would still elate fans and earn their money. Parappa the Rapper, Ape Escape, Everybody's Golf, Little Big Planet, Toomba, and plenty of others are all well-liked, due for a revival, and wouldn't be nearly as hard or expensive to develop as a new game would be. So why not take that approach? Leave the big AAA franchises for the PlayStation 5 and lean on some of these classic franchises and experimental games for the mobile library and perhaps a few crossovers here and there as Sony tends to do. If Sony could get their IP lined up in such a way that makes their mobile library distinct from Nintendo's and what you would get on Android or iOS, then they are simply left with fixing the hardware issues with the Vita. These issues have been talked to death over the years, so I'll just briefly mention the biggest ones. Unnecessary input features like cameras and touchpads and proprietary memory cards. Getting rid of these issues and adding some trigger buttons on the back would do a world of good. And if combined with a decent lineup of games including some new stuff and some classics, Sony would be in business. While it's tough to say when or even if Sony is even considering having anything to do with the mobile gaming space at this point, I think it's fairly plain to see that there is a path to success if Sony were to follow it. It's a narrow path and it leaves basically no room for error, but it does exist. With mobile gamers largely set in their ways at this point, the mobile gaming arena has probably never been a tougher cookie to crack than it is right now, but it's also just as true that Sony is uniquely positioned with its abundance of IP, thick roster of studios who could do them justice, and long reach in console design prowess to overcome that challenge. Are the risks of that road worth taking again? Does Sony miss out on more by not trying than it does by trying and failing? These are complicated questions that only they can answer for themselves. But if I were them, I wouldn't be giving up on this sector of the market just yet. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.